Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you have seen in uh, the homework of lab one, in the basic uh, connecting uh, tutorial, there are a few connections that must be connected to the microcontroller be before you start working with the microcontroller. So the main uh, signals that must be connected uh, is the power supply and the reset signal and the clock signal. So the micro peak microcontrollers mostly uh, they work on five volt. So you must have a five volt connection connected on VDD and VSS should, uh, should be connected to the ground. And the reset signal. So you have seen the MCLR pin of microcontroller. This MCLR pin is the master clear and the reset pin. So this pin, the MCLR pin must be connected to the power supply of five volt. As you see here in the diagram, the MCLR pin of the microcontroller is connected with a resistor 10 kilo ohm and it is connected to the VCC or which is the five volt. So LM7805 is a voltage regulator. The output of this uh, regulator IC is five DC five volts and this is connected to VDD and the same pin is connected uh, using a resistor. It is connected to MCLR. So you get five volt here on the MCLR pin. So if this pin is not connected or if it is floating, if it is not connected, then that means the voltage on this pin is floating. So it could be anything between zero and five volt. So a floating pin uh, is simply like uh, an open circuit. And when there is no voltage connected on this pin, then the microcontroller will be reset. That means it will not execute, it will not run. So let us see an example here. So I have pick 18 f 4580 microcontroller and I'm connecting one LED here on RC0 and it's connected resistor in series with the LED and the ground connected to the resistor. So let's change the value of this LED resistor to 330 ohms. Okay, now this is an example program and when you execute or when you start running the simulation, you find there are so many messages appearing here. So these messages, the microcontroller is not running, it's not executing anything. And these messages, if you uh, pause the simulation and click on the messages, you find it says MCLR is low, processor is in the reset. So MCLR is, is low and the processor is in the reset. And if you stop and click on the simulation, uh, click on the messages. It says at the end, no instruction cycles were executed. Processor may never have made it out of reset. Why is it like that? So this, this was because the MCLR pin is not connected to any power supply. So you must connect this MCLR pin to VDD. And uh, we can connect a resistor and go to the terminal mode. You have power here. So this power in the simulation, this is the same as five volt. And we can also connect a button to reset the microcontroller. Okay, now when you run the microcontroller, you'll find that MCLR is now connected to the power supply. And if you press the button, the microcontroller resets. So let us start the simulation once again. Okay, so there are no <clears throat> warning or error messages here. The microcontroller is running now and you can see it is executing something and you can see the LED is blinking here. So uh, if you press this button, now the microcontroller is, is a reset and it is not running anything. It is not executing any instructions. So this pin, the MCLR pin is now connected to the ground with this button, with the reset button. And the microcontroller is a reset and it is not, not running anything. And if you release the button, now it has once again started executing the program inside. So this is one of the uh, main signals that you must connect to the microcontroller. So the reset signal. And the third one is the clock signal. So there are two oscillator pins of microcontroller OSC1 and OSC2. And you must connect a crystal oscillator or a high speed oscillator or a resistor and capacitor RC oscillator. So one, there are several options given to you. So you can see here quartz crystal. So this is one of the one of the options that you can connect. Uh, ceramic resonator, even this one you can connect. And you can connect even an RC oscillator 
So this is seven capacity together. They will generate oscillations and the microcontroller. They will generate an oscillations and that can be used as the clock signal for the microcontroller. So these are the few options that you have. And if you look at the data sheet, you you'll find in the oscillator configuration section. There are so many different options available for you. So there are 10 options here. So you can connect uh, any, you can choose any of these options uh, for, the, for generating the clock signal of the microcontroller. And you'll find all the details given to you here. So if you use a crystal oscillator, what should be the values of these two capacitors? You can find them in the table here. So depending on the frequency of the oscillator, uh, you have to choose a capacitor value, which you can find here. And there are also options to choose the internal oscillator of the microcontroller itself. So if you scroll down, you find uh, capacitor selection for crystal oscillator, external clock input, and the RC oscillator selection. So you can find the recommended values here for calculating uh, the resistor and capacitor values. So here you find the internal oscillator block. So big microcontrollers, they have an internal oscillator block which can generate its own clock frequency. So you can even choose this option and the microcontroller will generate uh, the clock signal internally inside the microcontroller itself. So these are the few options that you have uh, for this oscillator selection. And you can find these uh, special function registers, oscillator tuning register, and the oscillator control register. So using these two registers, oscillator control register. So using these two registers, you can control or you can select the frequency of the internal oscillator of the microcontroller. Okay. Now, another concept that we can uh, revise here is when we connect a button to the microcontroller, when you connect a push button to the microcontroller, so buttons are normally mechanical switches. So when you press the button, they, they bounce slightly. So the, the input to the microcontroller is not stable. Uh, so as soon as you press the button, you can find the voltage level on the button. It bounces between five and zero volt for a few milliseconds or for a few microseconds before it gets stable. So what happens is if you, so what happens is when you sample the input on this pin of the microcontroller, when you have a button connected here, you'll find that the input rapidly changes between zero and five volt for a few microseconds or milliseconds before it becomes stable. So what we can do to avoid these uh, high frequency noise or these uh, awareness signals, what can we do to prevent this noise uh, from entering the microcontroller. So there are multiple options. So you can either connect a capacitor. So this capacitor will act as a filter and it will filter out the high frequency noise and only the low frequency signal will be sent as input to the microcontroller. So this is a hardware solution. And another solution is by using a delay block. So what we can do is in the software itself, instead of connecting an additional capacitor here, what we can do is uh, in the microcontroller, in the program, uh, as soon as you detect a signal change, so as soon as you see that there is a change from one to zero, you call a delay. So you call a delay of uh, more than 100 milliseconds. So during that delay time, the microcontroller, the input becomes stable. And then after that, you find that the input will be stable. So how do we write a delay in big microcontrollers? So you might have seen this in, uh, in the class or in, in the textbook, you find these instructions in the examples called delay. So what is a delay? So delay is a subroutine, it is like a function. So in MATLAB and in, in other programming languages, you see there is a, uh, they have user defined functions. So in assembly language, we call these functions as subroutine. So subroutine is a function in assembly language. So we are calling this function. So as soon as there is a change, so for example, if we write a statement here, bit test file register, we skip if clear. So when the input is one, it goes back to the 
previous instructions so it keeps on checking input here on port a comma one and as soon as there is a change it calls the delay subroutine so what is a delay subroutine so microcontroller cannot have a microcontroller cannot pause the execution so we cannot pause the execution of microcontroller uh, since the clock is running it has to keep on executing something so what we do is inside a delay subroutine so this delay subroutines they are written in this way so at the end at the end of the program you can write the label delay and after this label write a few instructions and you will find uh, there will be a return instruction so this written instruction it tells the microcontroller to go back to the same location so it executes these instructions so as soon as there is a change as soon as the input becomes zero it comes here it calls the delay subroutine so that means the microcontroller comes here it executes these instructions and then it returns back to the same location it keeps on executing the remaining instructions here so we cannot stop the microcontroller or we cannot pause the microcontroller so what we do is inside the delay subroutine we simply tell the microcontroller to keep on counting some numbers so let's say we have a counter register here so we can either increment or we can decrement these counter registers so we can write increment file register inc file register skip zero so it keeps on counting uh, the value of this register until it becomes zero so that means it starts from zero the initial value is zero of course so it starts from zero and it keeps on increasing until the counter becomes full that means until it reaches ff so after it reaches ff it has to roll back again so it has to it becomes zero once again so it cannot count more than ff so it cannot count more than 255 so it has to roll back to zero so when it when it when it goes back to zero once again then uh, this instruction is skipped and it comes here it comes so you can either write increment or we can write decrement so what happens is if you write decrement then once again the initial value is uh, zero here in the counter register so it decrements once it becomes ff so from zero if you decrement it becomes ff and then it keeps on decrementing until it becomes zero once again so when it becomes zero then it goes back it, it returns it goes to the return instruction it goes back here so this is like a nested loop so it executes this loop the internal loop 255 times 256 times and then it decrements the count of high register once then it goes back to the delay so that means it goes back here and then it decrements the internal loop 256 times and it decrements after that it decrements the count of high byte once again so it keeps on cycling like this until both these registers they become zero so that means uh, this counter or this delay loop it executes 256 times multiplied with 256 times so internal loop is 256 times multiplied with 256 times so you get 65536 times so this is the number of times the delay loop of the increment uh, of decrement instructions are executed so depending on the number of cycles taken for these uh, increment and decrement instructions and for the go to instruction so you can calculate the amount of time taken for this delay loop to execute so in your textbook in section 3.3 you find the explanation given for the time taken for the delay subroutine and how to calculate the amount of time taken for each instruction to execute so the amount of time taken for the instructions to execute that depends on the clock frequency so each instruction cycle in pk18 microcontrollers it takes four clock cycles to execute so the minimum uh, time taken for each instruction to execute that is known as the instruction cycle time for pk microcontrollers is one fourth of the clock frequency so for example if you have a four megahertz clock frequency that means instruction cycle frequency will be one megahertz and the time taken for each instruction to execute will be one microsecond
and that depends on the instruction cycle depend uh, in number of instruction cycles needed for the instruction to execute so if you have seen the instruction set the table of instruction set you will find in one of the columns so in this table of instruction set you will find in this column it shows you how many cycles are taken for this instruction to execute so for example the complement file register instruction it takes only one cycle to execute but the move ff instruction it takes two instruction cycles to execute and some of these instructions for example decrement file register skip if clear or skip if zero uh, these instructions they take normally they take one instruction cycle to execute for the decrement and when it skips it may need either two or three instructions to execute so that depends on how many instructions instructions or how many uh, locations in the program memory is it skipping so if it is skipping only one instruction or uh, a normal instruction it, it needs two clock cycles to execute or two instruction cycles to execute but if it but if it is skipping a big instruction like this so usually we find these instructions they occupy two bytes in the program memory so this is one byte and this is the this is this is another byte for this instruction in the program memory so if it is going to skip if it is skipping an instruction which occupies two bytes like this then it needs two cycles to execute but some of the instructions for example this move ff instruction it occupies four bytes in the program memory so you can see these are the four bytes that it that it occupies in the program memory so if this instruction is skipping a four byte instruction then in that case it will need three instruction cycles to execute you can find all this explanation given here <clears throat> so if you have a go to instruction after that so skipping a go to instruction it will need three cycles because it is a four byte instruction but if you are using a bra instruction so in this case it is only a two byte instruction so it will need two cycles to execute you can find explanation of all these instructions given here if you keep scrolling down so you can find it here so bit test file register skip if clear <clears throat> so it says here three cycle if you skip and followed by a two word instruction two word means a four word a four byte instruction so you can see the cycle activity here decode read the register process data and the fourth cycle is no operation so if it is skipping then so there will be another skipping cycle here and if it is skipping a two word instruction then it it needs two more cycles here instruction cycles here so you will find the calculation details here in in your textbook so all these instructions depending on the instruction cycle for example move lw0x55 is a one cycle instruction so for a 4 megahertz clock frequency it needs one microsecond to execute and here you find the delay calculation for pic 18 so if this is a delay subroutine here this is a delay subroutine given here so uh, the data inside this my register defined here is 250 so the number of cycles taken our number of times this loop executes is 250 then 250 multiplied with the number of cycles taken for each of these instructions that will give you the total time so you can find the calculation given here so 250 multiplied with 6 for all these instructions plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 so plus 1 plus 1 for these two and one for the skip uh, for the return So multiply them with one microsecond for each instruction cycle. So you get one thousand five hundred three microsecond. If you have an instant loop like this, loop inside a loop, then once again you can see the calculation given here. So you can see the calculation given here. So depending on 
the initial value of these registers. So if they are zero, they will count to 56 times. But if you load them with, with an initial value, so by loading them with an initial value, you can uh, precisely calculate or adjust the amount of time taken by the delay uh, subroutine. So normally, if you don't uh, load an initial value in these registers, then they will decrement from zero or from FF to zero. So they will count 256 times. But if you load them with an initial value, for example, here 250 and 200, then depending on your calculation, you can uh, adjust the amount of time taken by this uh, delay subroutine. And how do we define these registers, this R2 and R3? And in, in the example shown before, you have counter L and counter H. So these registers, they are user defined registers in the data memory. So you can define them by using, uh, before you start writing your program after hash include, so you can define them by using the EQU direct directive. So counter L EQ 60 means uh, the, the file register location 60 will be given a name as counter L. Similarly here 61 is given a name as counter H. And in the examples given here in the textbook, R2 EQ 7, that means the location number 7 in the data memory is given a name as R2. Similarly, location 8 is given a name as R3. So these are simply uh, names of locations inside the data memory. Okay, so go through all this explanation and it will help you uh, in completing, it will help you in the coming labs. We'll be using the delay subroutines uh, in, the, in the coming labs. Go through all the explanation given here and the explanations given in, explanations given here in the homework as well for connecting the power supply, the reset signal, the clock signal, and for connecting different components like switches, push buttons, relays, LEDs, etc. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.